All right, so I wanted to talk about Bitcoin. And the reason why I wanted to talk about Bitcoin mainly was because we had that move yesterday. Uh, and this is a move that we talked about, we discussed in the live stream itself. Uh, let me bring up my actual buying plan chart. And you can see what we did. And this is kind of according to what we said in the live stream exactly yesterday. We said we'd come up to this downtrending yellow line. That's, that's stemming from November. That, of course, in my opinion, would be a breakout point and would partially confirm a trend reversal. I think the full trend reversal would be confirmed at 28.6K, but this would partially confirm a trend reversal. We said yesterday, halfway through the pump, we're probably going to come up and retest it. We did. We came up and retested. In fact, we undershot it a little bit. We were a few hundred USD away from it. Uh, but ultimately, you know, if you're looking at that chart, that's basically a retest. That, that clarifies as a, re uh, you know, I guess that qualifies as a retest. Uh, and in fact, we actually saw a pretty bearish candle formation form because of that. We saw a massive... Uh, almost like a shooting star formation. It's not quite a shooting star, but it almost was like a long wick to the upside and pushed way back down very quickly uh, and ended up closing basically where we started, which is a bearish formation. Uh, and what does this indicate? Well, you know, it indicates that we're probably going to be retesting 17.5K. It's no surprise. Uh, everyone thinks that. And this is something that I've, I've, I've made very clear. And it's something that no one really thinks won't happen. Even the bulls, like even people who are bullish right now, kind of universally agree that in order to be super bullish, we have to be retesting for a double bottom. Uh, and if we go to like previous cycles, you know, what's happened previously for Bitcoin, and this is a good chart example, you know, what do we see for Bitcoin previously? Well, if we go to like the two week chart, we'll get a pretty decent perspective here. We generally see in bear markets, we see like one swoop down to the low, consolidation, and then we retest it, and then we start going up. Same thing in 2018, one swoop down to the low, consolidation, we almost retest in 2018, start going up, and the same thing could be happening right here. So generally speaking, you know, when we see these macro lows, we do see double bottom formations. That's no surprise. Uh, and so I think regardless, even if you think the bottom is in, you should be thinking there's going to be a 17.5K, 17.6K retest. Uh, and it wouldn't surprise me at all that, you know, if, the, if that holds, you know, it wouldn't really surprise me too much. But I, I would expect some sort of irrational wick to the downside if it was to hold. So for example, if we go there, we might close above it, but we might see a wick downwards, a sharp wick down to like 16,500, something like that, something weird like that. So don't expect it to hold like on a shorter time frame, but longer time frame, decent chance, man. It's a decent chance. Uh, and I've been very open as well about the exact price point. I see, uh, Reynold, you put a super chat in there, man. I'll get back to you in a second there. Uh, but you know, I've been very, very open about it. And my, my whole entire prediction for months and months and months has been date range. Uh, and that, that's no surprise to you guys. It's been a date range thing. Uh, I'm very much a believer in an October to November bottom. As to where it is, eh, doesn't really bother me too much. And my buying plan kind of reflects that. You know, my buying plan, as you can see here, 33% at 17.5K to 18K, which could be happening very shortly, by the way, within the next 24 hours, could be happening. We'll see. Uh, and then 33% at 11.5K to 13.8K. Again, so that's, that's kind of like, giving you a bit of an understanding that I wouldn't be surprised if we go down there. And then 67% at the breakout of the yellow line. Uh, so, you know, it's not exactly the price point itself that, that concerns me. It's, it's the date range. And I think it's getting really interesting now in general with the whole market. And, and you know, one of the reasons it's getting interesting uh, is because the S&P 500 is doing something very interesting. Okay, it, it's coming way back down. It's come way back down all the way down to the low it found in June. And it's retesting that low right now. In fact, we've dropped below the low a little bit. We're actually losing the low. And we're in the process of putting in a lower low on the S&P 500, which is a bad sign, okay, for the markets. It's not a good sign. Now, you know, we do have the 200-week SMA there for the uh, for the S&P 500. That's the 200-week SMA, that green line there. And if we zoom out and we go back, we can see that's active support on a few occasions. So we could very well, actually at multiple occasions, so we could very well bounce off of the uh, 200 week SMA, in which case us losing this low from June wouldn't be a massive deal because we just get caught quite quite soon. Uh, but you know, if we lose that 200, we can expect the S&P to, to flow downwards towards 3,400, which of course is the level we held before or, or rejected from before the COVID drop. Uh, we, that's where we can expect the S&P to go. Now, I wouldn't be getting overly concerned about the S&P. Uh, and the reason being is because you know, look, Bitcoin and the S&P, they're, they're, they're connected, but the S&P doesn't control Bitcoin, okay? It's the macro that controls Bitcoin. They're both connected to the macro, right? And I've said this before, I'll say it again. Bitcoin and the S&P 500 are not connected to each other. They are both connected to the macro. That means there is a certain amount of deviation you're going to get between uh, the S&P and Bitcoin. And a deviation, for example, that we've seen like that in the past is the fact that Bitcoin topped out in November while the S&P 500 topped out in January. And by the time the S&P 500 topped out, Bitcoin was already down 40%. Okay, so we realistically could bottom on Bitcoin, 
while the S&P is dropping. It wouldn't be outside of the realm of possibility. So just because the S&P is dropping and just because the S&P is losing its low doesn't necessarily mean Bitcoin needs to go to 10K. All right, it's, it's really worth considering that, really worth noting that, noticing that. And one thing as well that's worth noticing about the S&P is the fact that, yeah, it's, it's kind of losing support, but it is on support for the most part. So this is technically a bounce zone. And when you're looking at the DXY, and you're seeing the fact that the DXY is at resistance. In fact, the DXY is at strong resistance as well. While the S&P 500 is at, the, at support, this technically, at this point in time, and this could be invalidated very soon, technically speaking, this is a bounce zone. So it's not overly bearish yet. I think it's a little, little too early to call it a super, super bearish yet. This is technically still a bounce zone, uh, which is interesting because a lot of people would disagree with that and they'd just kind of get angry. But the, the point is that that's what it is, right? You know, we're on support on the S&P. We're at resistance of the DXY. That's what leads to bounces, generally speaking. Uh, now, obviously, that, that could change and we'll see in the next 24 hours. But that's just what it is at the moment. Uh, and, and another thing as well that I'd like to say is that, you know, not only is the S&P on support, you know, I'm not trying to sound bullish here because I'm really not. I do think Bitcoin will go down further. I'm just looking at this objectively and observing what's going on. You know, Ethereum's on support as well. Ethereum's on its 200-week SMA, which is, of course, a major indicator. Ethereum's about to see a, a bullish MACD cross. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's on support. It's on strong support, actually. It's from support that stemmed from June. And then on top of that as well, the total cryptocurrency market cap is not on support, but it is in a bullish structure. It's in a descending channel formation. So, it's not all bad, guys. You know, it's not all bad. And I, I, lots of people, you know, they, they just see the negatives when you're in a bear market in the same way that everyone just sees the, uh, the positives in a bull market. I don't think it's all bad. I think, yeah, Bitcoin will go down further. You know, I think it will go down to this 300-week SMA, this blue line, and that's 17.5K, of course. I think it definitely will retest that level uh, and that we've got our buying plan accordingly there. So we will, we will be buying when that does happen. But like, you know, I, I just, I don't see a sub 10K Bitcoin scenario. I just don't see the evidence for it. It's not something that I see is particularly likely. Uh, I really don't think the, the evidence stacks up for it. I think a lot of that is based off the fact when people say sub 10K Bitcoin, you know, the only thing they're really pointing to is is the, the macro and the traditional markets. And it's like, well, we've already established that the tr traditional markets and Bitcoin don't act perfectly together. You know, and we really already established that even in the bull market top that we just had, you know, last year, they didn't act perfectly together. So who's to say they're going to act together in the bottom, you know? And, and again, you know, this is another thing that, that I've been seeing a lot on YouTube and Twitter. People are saying things like, uh, you know, this, this whole structure here is one big inverted cup formation. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, it could be that you're not wrong. It could be. And if we break down from it, cool, that's active. But it also could just be a big W formation. You know, it, it also could just be a massive double bottom. Like, where, you know, where that doesn't... Just because you say something, it doesn't make it true. Like you have to remain objective. At this point in time, we have no confirmation of what this structure is. It could be an inverted cup. It could also be a double bottom. And we have no confirmation of really anything. You know, the S&P, yeah, S&P is not looking good, but it hasn't lost its low yet. In fact, it's kind of, you know, it's it's struggling to break below it. It hasn't lost it yet. And the DXY is at strong resistance. So let's just take a step back. You know, understand, yeah, we will see that double bottom of Bitcoin. It is coming pretty much, you know, 90% chance it's going to happen. But as of right now, it's not like the market's going to crash and burn and we're not going to know anything. We're going to wake up one morning, we're down 50%. You know, it's just, it's just not, it's not that bearish, right? So thanks for watching the video, guys. I want to take a brief look into the BitGet exchange. Now, this is my favorite exchange. I use this exchange for trading personally. I think everyone in Wolf's Crypto should do so. Why is that? Well, the reasons are very clear in my opinion. First and foremost, it's five times cheaper than Binance and Binance is known to be the cheapest exchange. It's also non-KYC on your personal end if you don't want it to be. And, and that obviously stands true to the values of cryptocurrency being decentralized. You can also KYC if you want to, uh, to make it easier for tax reasons. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. That means that it is available globally. So everyone in the world can access this exchange due to the fact that it's non-KYC, which is great. It also has a protection fund, which is a very important thing, right? Because... You know, exchanges get hacked all the time and people get hacked all the time by people in their personal lives. If you do get hacked and something happens, you can make a claim to that protection fund. They've got over like $200 million in reserve uh, so that if you make a claim and your claim is accepted, you can get that refunded into your account. That adds extra security to the exchange as well. And then on top of that, it's got a reward center that's available with my referral link uh, and you can gain access to over 4,000 USD in rewards. And I think just a temporary time frame, there is an extra little bonus thing going on. Uh, if you sign up 
to the exchange using my referral link and you and you do one trade, you'll get ten dollars deposited into your account, regardless of whether that was a profitable or negative trade. So go ahead and sign up to the BitGet Exchange using my referral link. It really helps out the channel and it definitely helps out yourself. This is by no doubt, by no stretch of the imagination, the best exchange I have found in the cryptocurrency market. It's so good that I actually reached out to these guys for a partnership. They didn't reach out to me, so check it out. And then we've also got the Crypto Academy. Uh, and if you're interested in becoming a trader, if you're interested to learn how to trade, to learn how to do TA, to learn how to identify market patterns, etc., cetera, and, and navigate, navigate an exchange correctly, uh, you can sign up to this course, Become a Trader, a 10-unit course. This course is, of course, developed by myself and Megawell Crypto, who's a fellow analyst in the space that a lot of you already know. We work very closely, uh, and we work closely using our two separate perspectives on the market to create one very consolidated, very concise course that is no doubt extremely useful for anyone wanting to become a trader or anyone wanting to improve their trading capabilities. We've got 10 units. All of these units have been critically analyzed by ourselves and also people we know in our personal lives and we found them to be completely coherent and completely effective in teaching people how to trade. We use different learning strategies, for example, visual learning, verbal learning, practical learning. We've incorporated all of that in and this is by no stretch of the imagination the best course you're going to find on the internet for cryptocurrency education. So go ahead and email us here at Crypto Academy Courses to find out more information. Without further ado, I'll end the video there. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.